Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Maestro Paul Gerasi, fencing master with the USFCA and the International Academy of Arms here at the 2022 Ascalon Sword Festival. We're about to see the gold medal match in the U-17 Cadet Men's Epe. On the left, we have Jun Wan Lee from the Penta Olympic Fencing Club fighting out of Fairfax, Virginia. And on the right, we have Fritz Miko from Hooked on Fencing in Cleveland, Ohio. And our official is about to start the bout. And you're going to notice that at the beginning of this bout, the score is 1-0 for Mr. Fritz Miko. And that's because there were two penalty cards issued to uh, Jun Wan Lee before the bout even started. Uh, one for an equipment failure and a uh, second one for a mask that was not conforming. And so the bout starts off with a 1-0 advantage to Mr. Miko. Both fencers moving quite well. Lee pressing forward. Lee using a French grip, holding it on the pommel for extra reach. Miko using the pistol grip. Lee attacks the wrist. Shows the point. Miko backs off. And there's a flesh attack by Lee, but it's met by a counterattack from Miko, and Miko scores the first point. Jumon Lee has to be just a little bit more patient with that one. Pick his time when to go, when to go with that flesh. Several feints from Lee, but they're not really believable, or at least not to Mr. Miko. That one's a little bit more believable. Miko backs off. Lee wants to get a reaction out of his blade. But Miko's not showing much. Miko's holding his cards close to his vest. He's not really showing anything. An attack to the foot there. Maybe not a real attack. Maybe that was just a probe just to see what he would do. And that time he gets Miko to come out and he scores his hand. So a point to Mr. Lee. One fencing two. And that's what Lee needs to do. He needs to, to get Miko to commit, to come forward. Both fencers on their toes, moving with tempo. Lee comes forward with the attack. Miko parries and reposts, but he doesn't get a clean parry, and it's a double touch. Two fencing, three. In this under-17 cadet men's FA final bout. Miko just waiting. There's the attack by Lee. And Miko finds the blade, delivers the repost, and scores his fourth touch. Miko in control of this bout. He knows that Lee has to come forward, and he's waiting for him. Lee has to find a way to get that initiative. And Miko comes forward. Probably just trying to keep Lee honest. Lee with several feints, but they're out of distance. And there's the long attack from Lee. It's parried, and Miko makes that repost. If Lee is going to do that long flesh attack, he has to either take the blade, or he's got to get Miko coming forward. If Miko's going backwards, he can just step and counter. Now Lee is trying from the other side of the strip. Perhaps a, a new diagonal will help him. He makes an attack to the hand and a remise to the arm, and that is a touch for Jun Wan Lee. Three fencing five. He likes this side of the strip, so he's going to keep there. And it's attack, but it's parried by Mr. Miko. And Miko scores his sixth touch. Again, Lee comes forward, met by the counterattack. He's got to find a way to engage that blade and pick it up and control it. It's one thing to actually get the blade, but it uh, has to be controlled all the way through. 
And of course, unlike foil and saber, where a simple beat is sufficient enough to get the right away, Epe enjoys no such right away. You have to take the blade and actually control it all the way through. Um, and Junwa Lee is having a hard time doing that. Fritz Miko, on the other hand, is enjoying it because he can make uh, Mr. Lee flesh from out of distance. And when that happens, he has an easy parry repost, especially because Junwa Lee has that French grip and it's a slightly weaker grip. It gives you a little extra reach, a little extra distance, but um, you know, when it comes down to, uh, to the infighting and, and moves where you need a little bit more uh, strength involved, it sometimes can become a, a detriment. So let's see what can happen in this second period. Um, both fencers are getting some coaching. It looks like uh, Jun Wan Lee got some coaching and some uh, some advice from a teammate, uh, but it looks like he's dismissed him and he's kind of collecting his thoughts. He's pacing on the strip right now. I'm sure he's thinking about how can he score the single light touch. Uh, Fritz Miko uh, looking to step back and counter or step back and repost. We've seen both from him, but Fritz Miko in control of this bout, 7-3. And it looks like we're about to start the second period. We fenced to 15 touches. So let's go back to the action. Jun Lee again on the right side of the strip. And now a little hotter tempo than before. Both fencers exhibiting high tempos. Lee's still not finding the time he likes. He's looking for it. He's looking for that special moment, when to go. Several feints, but Miko doesn't respond. Oh, what is that? And all of a sudden, in the middle of the air, Junwon Lee's blade started firing. So the referee has confiscated the weapon. And I'm not really sure what made the blade do that. And unfortunately, Mr. Lee has had equipment pro problems plaguing him in this final bout. He actually received a red card to start this uh, because of non-conforming equipment. And the referee will check out another weapon here. The weapon has been inspected. It passes the weight and shim test. And they've checked the grounding on the bells. The referee will establish the center. And the fencers begin again. So no touch awarded. It's still three fencing seven. Attack parry or post. Nothing done. There's a long attack by Lee. Lee's got him at the end of the strip. Let's see what happens. Echo looking to counter. Oh. And there's a repost by Miko. Miko getting control of that blade when Lee actually goes. Miko up eight to three. Well, he has to try something different. What can he do? Now he's changing. He's going over to the other side of the strip. Trying to keep Miko off balance. And there's a tackle with Priest de Fer. And it hits. And that time, it looked like Lee actually got a good control of the blade. And he scores his fourth touch. He also made that... Uh, attack. He, he got the blade by fleshing into it. He fleshed forward, took the blade, and scored his target. Now he's back over on the right side. Flashes on each side of the blade. And that time, just a well-timed counterattack by Miko. Nine fencing four. Back to the foot by Lee. 
And there's a flesh. It's parried and reposed by Miko, making it look easy. Ten fencing, four. Miko in control of this bout. Lee flashes that blade out. Miko just backs off. He knows Lee has to attack in earnest. He's just waiting for it. Every time Lee attacks, it's, it's a parry repost. Oh, but that time a counterattack with opposition and a beautiful one to the upper shoulder. Textbook at pay. Fritz Miko, 11-4. Jumon Lee has got to try something here. He's going to have to take some risks. There's an attack to the foot by Miko. Oh, and an attack by Lee is met by a, a beat repost from Miko. And Miko scores his 12th touch. All right, fencers begin again. Here we go. Lee's got to do something. And this time he comes forward with a low attack to the leg. It's met by a counter, but it's a double touch. And it looks like as a result of this touch, Mr. Lee will needs to change his weapon yet again. Now this could be some sort of uh, ploy for time where he needs to think about something, or maybe he's actually going to switch to a different style. I see one of his teammates taking out a pistol grip. And maybe he's done with that French grip. Maybe he wants to try something different. Maybe he knows he has to change up his style. To change up his style, he might have to change up his grip. And as, as Epe fencers know, there is a distinct style fencing with the French grip because you're usually holding it on the pommel, trying to get that extra two inches of reach. But if you need that extra two inches, holding it further back um, decreases your power. And so sometimes having a little extra power with the pistol grip will help. You get less reach, less length, but more power. And maybe uh, Mr. Lee needs to just try anything, and so this might be something just to try. And if you're down uh, 513, you might as well try something, because we fenced to 15 points here at the Ascalon Sword Festival. All right, looks like the blade is ready. The the referee is asking them to check their guards. And we are back to the action here. Now Lee with the pistol grip coming forward. Makes his attack with the flesh, and it's a double touch. So it's 6-14. If uh, Mr. Miko scores one more point, even if it's double, he will win the gold medal. Let's see if Lee's new strategy pays off. He engages the blade, but Fritz Miko slips off the blade, scores the counterattack, and Fritz Miko is our under-17 cadet men's epee champion.